Okay. So, I'm getting ready to do sports wrap, and I'm going to do a manual white balance. And I'll show you how I go about doing that. Now look over here at this program monitor, and I've got camera four punched up. My other cameras are around here, and I've got a white card in here. You want to make sure that the white card has no gelled lights on it at all, just white light. So, now I come over here. Well, here, look up here first. I've got my cameras one, two, and three all zoomed in to that white card. So, one of the biggest things when doing white balance or video is having a correct exposure. Right over here is the iris knob on the CCU. And you can see right here, there's an SDI waveform monitor. And up here is an analog waveform monitor. A lot of people are familiar with this. We'll teach a little bit about that. Okay, for doing a white balance, you want to make sure they're on 80 when you're actually doing the white balance. But the first thing we're going to do is close these three cameras down all the way because along with doing a white balance, you have to do a black balance. If your blacks aren't balanced correctly, then your blacks can actually look blue or reddish or greenish. So you want your blacks to look black and your whites to look white. So first thing is black balance. We'll go up to this unit here. This is the analog. Okay, I'm on camera number one. This right here is where video is and I want that line. See, I'm adjusting the master pedestal on the CCU. That's this knob. It's a lower knob. So I'm going to adjust master pedestal. You can see how it's going up and down. Now watch this. Come over to the program monitor, and look at that. See how it goes up and down, okay? If your master pedestal is above 7.5, your blacks will look all washed out. And if it's too low, it'll, it'll look like it's crushed. That's what they call it, being crushed. So back here to the waveform monitor, I want iris closed all the way, and I adjust my master pedestal to 7.5. Go to camera two, okay? Adjust pedestal to 7.5. And before we go on, I just want to tell you that there's a position on this thing to calibrate, and you got to make sure that this main line right here is at zero. A lot of times it's always at zero, but just make sure that it's at zero. If it's not, it's going to throw everything else on, off. So we're at camera two, let's go camera three, and it looks like camera three. I'm adjusting a master pedestal, is good at 7.5. Now come over here to the vector scope. Vector scope gives color information, and you can see if I go back to camera number one, that, that little dot, I want to put it right in the center. This is an easy way of doing it. So I go on the CCU, look down here. The first group is pedestal. That's what I want to use. When we do the actual white balance, we'll use gain. But for this, it's only, it's marked PED for pedestal and it's red and blue. So we go up here, see that? Get it even, now I do blue, over a little bit, red, over a little bit, and now it's in the middle. So now I know that I've got a good black balance. Oh, I forgot one thing to tell you. Back here on the CCU, in order to do a manual white balance, you have to be on manual. And this one wasn't on manual. So these three have to be on manual. Okay, we'll come back up to two, now you can see that two is off, up, over, down just a touch, that's good. So what do we do now to do white balance? I've already shown you that we're zoomed in on a white card. So camera number one, this is the iris knob on the CCU. We open that up, let me punch it up. We open that up so that it's at 80 IREs right here. And the reason you put it at 80 because these cameras have clipping circuitry in them, so it doesn't allow the signal to go beyond 100, and it'll, it'll, it can kind of mess things up if it's, you're into that clipping circuitry. So camera two is at 80, camera three is at 80, there. So punch, I'm all at about 80. So I go to camera one. Right over here, there's my dot. Now, down on the CCU, where it says gain, that's what I'm using for doing the white balance. 
Don't get confused and go back to do pedestal and just so's because you won't be able to see it for one thing, but you'll, you'll mess up your uh, black balance. So on gain, just up here, that's pretty good for the white balance. Now, the next thing, I'll show you why you want to use a waveform monitor. Now you can see right here this peak, okay? You go, wow, what is that peak? First of all, there's two of them, and those are two fields in each frame of video. What does that peak represent? Now watch this. I'll make it change, or it's changing. What is that? This is an electronic representation of the image that a camera is giving me. Now if you'll pull out Bonnie and go over here to the program monitor, that is what you're seeing on that waveform monitor. Okay, now come back to the waveform monitor, and I'm going to turn the iris way up. But first, that peak is right at about 75, which is where it should be for Caucasian skin. I'll turn it up here as long as, as soon as I get on the right camera. There. Now see how it's so far up here like this? There's that clipping circuitry again in the camera. It's not letting it go above 100, but it's really high. Now, Bonnie, go back to the monitor. Now look what that looks like. Look at how overexposed that image is. Now hold it on there, and I'm going to bring it back to where it should be so that it's normal. Okay, that's at about 75 right there. That's why you use a waveform monitor, so that you can make sure that your video exposure is correct. Now, just to let you see that better, I'm going to go to camera number one. You can see Eric sitting there. Okay, Eric, go ahead and do the move. See how he's moving his hand back and forth? Now come back to the waveform monitor and look right here. See that thing going back and forth, that peak? That is, of course, his hand. It's going back and forth. This is giving you an electronic representation of what that video signal looks like. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my camera two, punch it up. This is what he looks like, and that is a correct exposure. It's about 75 to 80, and now hold it on there. I'm going to turn the iris up. That's what it looks like when it's overexposed. You can tell overexposed video. You can see around here you've lost all the detail. It looks almost like a nuclear explosion. You don't want that. You want it back here. Even that right there is overexposed. Eric looks straight ahead. Even that looks overexposed. See, if I come up just a little bit, see how that's overexposed, that's overexposed. Come back to the waveform monitor. See where it is? It's at 100 IREs. No video signal should ever be above 100. Now watch the waveform. I'll bring it down to where it's supposed to be. Right about there, go back to the monitor. That is a good exposure for a uh, face in video. So there you go.